Let's take a moment to talk about the Q button under the headphone source section in the Studio 192 Mobile. So first off, in order to view the headphone routing when you're working in universal control, you need to make sure that you've selected the main fader either here or there. So for example, if I'm working on an individual channel and we're looking at the fat channel parameters, I can either select the main fader here or the one over here. Now we have access to the headphone source section where we have a couple drop down menus. So we have headphone queue where we have the option to choose these different outputs over here. And we have headphone primary where we have the same options over here. And then of course we have our queue toggle button. So this can be a little bit confusing at first, but it's important that you understand what's what. So when you have the queue activated, then you'll be listening to the headphone Q source. When it's deactivated or grayed out, then you will be listening to the headphone primary. Now let's take a moment to have a look at Studio One over here because Studio One has a certain layout. So for example, if we go ahead and let's just make this so that we can view the headphone source, we can see that as we change things in Studio One, that it updates in universal control. Same for the bottom one over here. Now it's important to take note of what's what over here. So the first drop down menu over here is directly linked to headphone queue. So as you can see, as we change this, it updates. Now the second one is directly related to headphone primary. So for example, if we change this, you'll see headphone primary updates. So it's important to understand what's what. Now it's also important to understand, like I mentioned, when we're toggling queue on and off, which can be done through universal control or one of the apps, either for iOS or Android. Or in addition to that, it can also be done from the hardware itself, simply by clicking the Q button that we're listening to different sources. So let's take a moment to talk about why we might want to listen to different sources altogether. So the way I see it is it's broken up into two different use cases, which are the most practical ones in terms of how we can implement this into our workflow. One being where you are both the recording engineer as well as the recording artist. It's quite common for an artist to want to listen to a customized mix or a custom mix while they're tracking. Now, when they're playing back or monitoring, they very well may want to listen to a completely separate mix. So if we take a look at our QMix setup in Studio One, you'll see that Analog Lineouts 3.4, I've renamed that to HP4 because I have the Analog Out 3 and 4 connected to an HP4 amplifier. Now this is what I will be using for a headphone amp connected to my Studio 192 mobile. So essentially what this means now is that I can toggle between two completely separate different mixes. So the first mix over here, in terms of what's coming out of the main mix of my console, is a basic mix. Faders at Unity Gain, and I don't have a click activated on my main outs. But if we look at my HP4 mix, you'll see that we've unlocked the Q mix setting, and we've actually adjusted this. So I've brought this level up. We can bring it up, you know, plus 5.3 dB. And in addition to that, we can see that if we click this output tab over here, I've also engaged the click and I've also adjusted the click volume. So now when I'm recording, the idea is that I want to be listening to the HP4 or the line out 3-4 QMix. Now when I'm listening back, I want to listen to another mix, which is I don't need to have the click on, on this output and also my faders at Unity Gain. So the important thing to note over here is which mix you're listening to and also the routing that you've got set up. So like I said over here, let's quickly recap this. If I have Q enabled on either the hardware or the software in universal control, then I'm listening to my main mix. So my headphone Q is gonna be my main mix. If I have Q deselected, then I'm gonna be listening to my alternate mix. So the thing that we need to do over here is we need to adjust our headphone primary to be mix three, four, but we could easily do the opposite. So for example, in fact, I'd rather work that way. I'd rather listen. So my headphone Q mix is three, four and my primary, which I'll think of as my main mix. I'll set that to main mix. So now when I activate Q, I will be listening to 
Mix 3-4, which is coming out of the Line Outs in Studio One, and that is my HP4 mix. Now, the cool thing is, I don't have to be patched in to my HP4 to listen to this. I can just go ahead and toggle between my cue being on or off. So for example, if I'm looking at universal control here, I'm gonna engage Q from my hardware. Now I'm listening to mix three, four, which would be my alternate Q mix I've set up in studio one over here, where I've increased my level and also I've given myself a click track. Now, if I wanna go ahead and play this back, I can simply use my hardware or my software to disable the Q and now I'm listening to my headphone primary, which is my main mix. So that's one use case. Now the other use case would be essentially the same thing, but instead of recording yourself, let's talk about when working with other artists and creating custom Q mixes. Now, one thing that's pretty hard to do is when you're trying to ask an artist if their mix is okay, and you're literally having to take visual cues where they're telling you to bring something up and up and up, and then, okay, stop, okay, it's too loud, bring it down. The concept of trying to set a level without actually being able to hear what you're doing to a mix is a little convoluted to me. Now, the other aspect is you might be in the control room where you have an artist that's sitting in a live room and perhaps the headphone amplifier is sitting next to them in the live room. So unless you were to go into the live room and plug your headphones into the same headphone amplifier to set a mix for them, it would be incredibly difficult to do. But if we use the primary and the cue source that we have available in universal control, and we use this cue button, then we can do this pretty easily. So for example, in the exact same way that we used it before, if I wanted to temporarily listen to the exact same cue mix that the artist is listening to in my live room, I can simply go ahead, enable cue, and then I'm tapped in and listening to my headphone cue mix source. Then I can go ahead, I can set my metronome levels, any mix levels that I need, and then when I'm done and the artist is happy, then I can just go ahead, disable Q, and now I'm listening to my headphone primary, where I'm able to monitor the mix the way I want to from the control room. So, an incredibly powerful feature, and once you understand it, it can be a huge time saver and really, really help your workflow in a tracking session. Thank you.